What's up, church? Pastor Darren here. I'm here to give you another pastoral update. Uh, hopefully you watch this and you are encouraged. I want to lift your heads to what God is doing in this moment. I know that things are beginning to open up. There's some excitement in the air. It's Spring is here and we are excited for what's ahead. It feels like um, something new is here. It feels like there's a new phase that we are entering into, not just as a society, but also as a church. And I want to invite you into what I think God might be doing with our church. I'm going to frame this conversation from uh, scriptures, and then I'm going to give you some practical things I want to invite you into as a church to tell you about what's coming up. So Acts chapter 8, verse 4, it says this, those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. You see, when you read the book of Acts, what you see over and over again is that this is simply the story of the continuation of Jesus' life and ministry through the church in the power of the Holy Spirit. You first hear about Philip in Acts chapter 6. Philip is this guy who is selected by the apostles to carry on administrative tasks of the church. There was a food crisis within the church. The food distribution to the widows was causing conflict amongst the church. And so the apostles, rather than just waiting tables, they said, we need to focus on prayer and the word of God. They selected seven men from the church to be leaders and to volunteer for the task of organizing and facilitating the administrative needs of the church. They looked for people who were filled with the Holy Spirit and full of wisdom to help with the administrative task. And what we see in Acts 6 is, is as soon as they do this, as soon as they, they empower the volunteers, the seven men that were listed, the church ex experiences an evangelistic explosion. The number of disciples in the area increased. It was a moment for the church where they empowered leaders, they delegated leadership, they, they passed off and empowered leadership to move on. And the church moved. But then we read about Philip in Acts 8. So he goes from, organizing the casseroles and the food being distributed to widows to being one of the few that that or one of the many that were scattered because of persecution acts 7 the church experiences persecution and in acts 8 those who were part of the church are forced outside of jerusalem now i want to make a highlight real quick operating in the ministry of the holy spirit is all about obedience. Operating in the ministry of the Holy Spirit is all about obedience. You see, one minute, Philip is waiting on tables for widows. And then there's persecution. And the programs and the structures and the rhythms of ordinary church life, excuse me, are disrupted. And everyone except the apostles are scattered. One minute, Everything's normal. Life is what it used to be. There's church on Sundays. There's midweeks going on. We're meeting in person. And then the next minute, everyone's scattered in church as we know it. Life as we know it is disrupted. And we find ourselves in new territory. Now, Philip was filled with the Holy Spirit. And what we learn according to scriptures is the Holy Spirit empowers gifts based on the missional need of the moment. The Holy Spirit empowers gifts based on the missional need of the moment. You see, Philip arrives into a new city in Samaria in this new era of church, and he doesn't simply rely on the old forms of church, but instead out of obedience to the presence of God. He becomes a preacher. He heals the sick. He delivers those who are persecuted, who are experiencing affliction, excuse me. And as a result, the city itself experiences a, a revival. There's joy in the city because of the gospel. One minute the church needs administrative support. The next minute a city needs an evangelist. Are you with me? This is what the Bible teaches us, that there are times when the church needs servants to support the work. 
And there are times when the city needs evangelists and preachers to go to work. Do you know what I'm talking about? I believe we're in that season where both things are true. We need men and women filled with the Holy Spirit to move out in to the, the spaces they find themselves in their neighborhoods, um, in their communities, in their workplaces with hope, with joy, with mission, empowered from the Holy Spirit, gifted in the supernatural to do the things that Jesus would do. We need to be released. God wants to anoint the church for this next season on mission. And at the same time, God wants to equip the church with servants who are filled with the Spirit to serve the new era of church, the new moment, the new time that we are in, this Kairos mo moment. The Holy Spirit is moving in the church, empowering the church to serve one another as servants, washing each other's feet, and in the city. The same Spirit is, is going to anoint those who are open and willing, who release the outcomes, who walk in obedience to God to serve within the church and to minister outside. Are you with me? Are you paying attention? Are you ready for what's coming? Brothers and sisters, this is what we've been talking about. God is releasing the church. So I want to encourage you with this framework that the Holy Spirit wants to empower you, wants to equip you and give you gifts for the missional need of this moment. So we have lots of things going on. Check this out. We have Easter coming up. We are going to celebrate Easter on April 4th. We are so excited for what God is doing. We are having in-person gatherings outside at the Grand. We have um, social distance gatherings. We're following safe gathering protocols. And we're going to do a 9 and 11 service. Our, uh, the number of people, the capacity has increased. We are calling this Sunday, Easter Sunday, Hope Resurrected. I've been driving around and looking at our city, walking around our city, wondering what it looks like for hope to be resurrected in the city of Long Beach. I believe God wants to birth all sorts of new things in this next season, um, and it really is beginning with Easter. So we have a 9 and 11 service. You can register online. Registrations are available. There's limited space. So I want to encourage you to invite your families, invite your neighbors, bring people with you to these safe gatherings because we are excited for what God is doing. Easter is here. With that, we need teams again. I think uh, we're, it's time to call back the volunteers. We want to reactivate the church, um, not just in the power of the Holy Spirit, but for hospitality and welcoming. I believe there's going to be a flood of people coming to church after things open up. People are going to be looking for opportunities to meet with God and encounter God and walk with others in community. It's your time to shine, church. So I need hospitality volunteers to welcome people, to serve people um, on Sundays. We need uh, tons of volunteers for this next season. There's a new season among us. So whether you serve faithfully in the past, thank you, or you're new to our church and you want to get plugged in as a servant, there's no better way to do it than right now. Go to our website or download our app. Check out the section that says volunteer form. Fill it out and we're going to get back to you because we need a lot of volunteers for the coming season. Also, we are anticipating God doing amazing things, not just on Easter, but what's happening next is he's going to release the church in many ways. So we are going to be training you in prayer. We believe God wants to do amazing things through prayer, not just in our in-person gatherings, not just on Zoom in our digital communities, but on the streets as we go. So we are going to be hosting prayer trainings on Wednesday, March 24th at seven o'clock and um, on Sunday, March 28th at two o'clock. So we're having two different prayer trainings, Wednesday, March 24th at 7 p.m. and Sunday, March 28th at 2 p.m. You can go to our website or our app to sign up for that. Immediately following, following our Easter, we're launching a new series called The Emotionally Healthy Discipleship. Um, the next, this is part of our big year of radical discipleship and formation. And I know we've talked a lot about emotional health. And the language of emo emotional health sounds daunting. But I want to encourage you that we are going to equip our disciples at the Garden Church to be emotionally healthy. We want to walk down a path towards emotional health for the rest of our lives. This is not just something that happens on accident. It takes work and it takes tools to learn and re-educate ourselves on how to engage in things well. So there's coursework, there's a workbook we're coming out with, there's also um, 
uh, resources from the book, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality, and videos from Emotionally Healthy uh, Spirituality. So we want to encourage you to buy that book, uh, sign up for the course, join a digital community. If you sign up for it in your digital community, um, we will be bringing you a free copy of the materials on Easter. So sign up so you get your free copy of Emotionally Healthy Spirituality and the, and the work we're going to be going through together. So look forward for Emotionally Healthy Spirituality and the series we're doing, Emotional Health, Healthy Discipleship. Also, we are launching Alpha right after Easter. So if you want to help lead Alpha um, or participate in the course, I want to encourage you right now to go to our website, go to the Alpha page or download the app and go to our Alpha page where you can sign up to be a part of evangelism in this next season. We want to invite friends and coworkers to join us on Zoom. It will be an online course where, that we do together on Zoom. Um, and it's done very well this year. And it's Alpha. If you, if you haven't heard of Alpha, uh, check it out on our website. It's an incredible vehicle for evangelism. It's been done around the world for over 27 million people that have gone through the course. So there's a lot happening. Um, we are going into a new season. Easter's here. We need some more volunteers. We're doing prayer training. We have emotionally healthy discipleship. We have Alpha going on. On top of that, we are going to start regathering. And for now, we're going to be doing them uh, every month, but that will increase as things begin to open up. So continue to pray with us, continue to serve alongside in the city, um, and join us as we enter into this new season. That's all for me. So I hope that you have a great time, a great season. Join us um, this Easter. I love you guys. Thanks for being a part of our community. Um, I'll talk to you soon.